So what is this particular taboo? It can be traced to the culture of science, in which it is widely assumed, at least publicly, that concepts of spirituality and religion are completely irrational and have nothing to offer to science. Or worse, the ideas are harmful to science and must be vigorously resisted. Harold Wallace is, or Wallach is a well-known researcher in complementary and alternative medicine at the University of Northampton in England. He wrote that, quote, in mainstream scientific circles, this topic, alternative and complementary medicine, has even had a quasi-obscene touch until very recently, and still has in more traditionalist scientific circles. Now that's just alternative and complementary medicine. Okay, we're talking about something even further than that, so you can imagine how some scientists have a visceral reaction to psychic phenomena. The effects of this taboo can be seen very clearly in the 2005 annual report of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The back cover shows three icons of science, Isaac Newton, Thomas Edison, and Marie Curie. They're famous for many contributions, including development of a theory of gravity, inventions including the light bulb, and understanding radioactivity. But Newton, as we all know, or some of us know, spent the majority of his career working on alchemy. And Edison spent a majority of his time developing instruments to communicate with the dead. And Marie, Marie Curie attended seances. The woo-woo taboo prevents the AAAS from publicly acknowledging this, or perhaps even from realizing that our very icons of science were also vitally interested in woo-woo topics. Things are slowly changing between science and spirituality, and you can even find a few academic centers that are devoted to this dialogue. But by contrast, you will not find a single academic center anywhere in the world that is devoted to studying the interface between science, spirituality, and psychic phenomena. And add in alchemy and astrology as well. There's not one academic center. Well, why not? Alan Wallace has written, despite centuries of modern philosophical and scientific research into the nature of mind, at present there is no technology that can detect the presence or absence of any kind of consciousness. For scientists don't even know what they're supposed to measure. Strictly speaking, at present there is no scientific evidence even for the existence of consciousness. All the direct evidence we have consists of non-scientific, first-person accounts of being conscious. <laughs> so what happens when we listen to the data of first-person accounts of consciousness, which are in turn based on a legacy of a couple thousand years of disciplined and skilled observation? We find documents like the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Within the sutras we find in the third book, the Vibhuti Pada, talks about the cities or the powers associated with the practice of deep exploration of inner space. We find that with sufficient practice and ability, the yogi will comprehend past, present, and future as an integrated whole. We'll gain knowledge of previous lives. We'll perceive another person's mind. We'll gain knowledge that is normally unperceivable. And we'll find that these powers are obstacles to the highest spiritual realization, but will serve as magical powers in the objective world. Most scientists regard these magical tales as stories of bygone, unsophisticated days long before modern science brought skepticism and critical thinking into high art forms. But not all scientists have adopted that assumption, and those who have studied the cities in the laboratory have found that some of them can be verified under rigorously controlled conditions. Apparently, the cities do exist, just like Patanjali said they did a thousand years ago or more. This, by the way, is at least for the cities that we've been able to study in the laboratory. There are many that have not. So to paraphrase Bono, this ought to be really, really fucking interesting. <laughs> and yet, it remains an unspoken secret within and outside of science. It's a case of a taboo in action. Thank you. Thank you.